Hello folks and welcome along to the Michael Muter Show episode 2. You're all doing well. It is a cold Sunday afternoon as I record this. Um, uh, a bit of an apology actually because this is coming out a little bit later than it should. Because uh, just scheduling and things like that. The first episode came out on a Thursday and all going well this will come out today. So yeah, apologies for that, and I think it'll be a weekend kind of a podcast, I think it'll be going up either Saturday or Sunday, but usually probably a Sunday, I'd say. Anyway, yeah, you may notice I'm outside as well too, I said in the last episode that I would be outside more often, and uh, yeah, stick it to it. Although I think I said I do little segments outside and I go places, but um, I just thought, you know, I'd record outside, you <laughs> know. I have notes written down on my phone, my little notes app, and <laughs> I was thinking there about sometimes when I open my notes app and I have like one word, just one word reminder. I say, oh, I must remember that now, and I write down something like marbles or something, and it's like, <laughs> what was I doing? I, birdhouse, you know, <laughs> dog. I don't have a dog. Why, why have I written on the word that? That's not written there, but I'm going to be like, one word kind of things in the notes and I'd be looking for notes for this show and for the show on radio and I would be scrolling through before the show would start where are those notes gone to because I take notes all the time for little things and um, just little ideas and all kinds of stuff and I'd be like right where was the one with that one now okay here we go I think you can pin them up the top actually yeah so anyway yeah oh yes uh, other thing I wanted to talk about too was um I, on the website, I posted some little festive activities. Yeah, little printouts you can do. Because, right, so when I was a kid inside in school, primary school, we used to get these little, you know, little activities, end of the year kind of thing like that. Well, not end of the school year, obviously, end of the, end of the calendar year, I suppose. I think of, that always confused me. It's like, the end of the year, it's like, that's not the end of the year, it's... It's only July or June or whatever, you know, in school. Anyway, uh, but when I was in primary school, we used to get these little print-out activities and little workbooks and little fun little things uh, just before Christmas. And I thought, you know, I for years I was like, I should do something like that. And I thought, should I do like a really, you know, I don't know what kind of thing I would do. So I would, right, I sat down there the other weekend. I said, uh, can I do a load of drawing? So what I did was I made up a little decoration cube. <laughs> I just like those. I think they used to do them for Easter as well too. Yeah, the Easter, I think the cube thing is more of an Easter thing. It was a little basket. You'd make a little paper basket and fold it. There wouldn't be a lid on it. But this one that I put up on the website has a little lid. And just you can colour it in. with Whatever you want to use the colour in. and Or leave it blank if you want. And it's little drawings on there. And, uh, yeah, little make and do projects, that one. And there's puzzles and colouring pages and it's all ages and uh, instructions on the decoration cube and everything like that. So just a good li- little fun little project, you know. Nice little thing to do there one afternoon. I just sat down and made them. I thought that'd be fun. That'd be a nice fun thing to do for the website, you know. I love making little things for the website. <laughs> I remember I was talking to someone before and every time they would ring... They go, what are you doing? I was like, I'm working on the website again. <laughs> when I started up first, I'd be like, uh, messing around with it and adding things and changing the look of it and making it all up nice and writing up little uh, pieces for it and all kinds of things. And uh, yeah, I, I like it. It's like, it's like a blog or something. Why bring back blogs? You know? Because... <laughs> Right, so there was a whole thing with Twitter or X or whatever, and people were leaving there, and what, what's the new social media site? And I always started thinking, why can't we go back to, like, RSS readers and blogs, you know? Because everyone's like, oh, where is everyone, what is it, what is the social media site that everyone's on? And people are posting to a lot of places and all kinds of things, like Mastodon or Blue Sky or whatever. And I was like, why can't it just be, like, go back to what it was years ago... We have an RSS reader, and then if someone's on one blog site and another blog site, it doesn't really matter, because you got the RSS feed. Pop that in, all your friends, you can see what everyone's posting, you know? 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's my hot take. Oh, do you know, I feel like RSS readers were kind of before my time on the internet. I think when I kind of went on the internet for the first time properly, it was kind of with Facebook and stuff like that. And I remember it was like hearing about RSS readers. And, go, and I use an RSS reader now for blogs and news sites and everything. It's really cool. It's just really handy to have it all in one little app. And, uh, of course, we still have RSS feeds with podcasts, which is what you're listening to right now, the uh, Michael Media Show podcast. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, because you know what you're listening to. Anyway, oh, it's brisk. It's brisk. What's it here, folks? It is brisk. Is that the word I'm thinking of? It's uh, cold, anyway. Yeah. No snow, yes. Some places around Ireland are giving down with snow, but no snow... Yes, so, yeah, it's getting frosty though, oh, it's getting frosty in the mornings, yeah, Data, it's this time of year now, I'm thinking about the kind of films I want to watch over this next month, and I don't just mean Christmas films, I will be I'll probably be doing a list somewhere along the way on the website about uh, a list of uh, Christmas film recommendations, more things just that I like, really, but, um, kind of films I want to watch over Christmas not always Christmas films as I say one of them one of the films I'm thinking of watching over the next month again which I've seen it a number of times obviously is The Muppet Movie <laughs> that seems like a kind of film you'd watch on Christmas Day right Muppet Movie or in or around that time The Muppet Movie I was never a big fan of Muppets Take Manhattan that's my hot take there you go I know controversial maybe I know but uh, never a big fan of that I liked Muppet Movie though that's little Robin. There was little Robin here on a wall. Oh, it's just hanging out. <sighs> Off again. Anyway, sorry. Got distracted. A, little, a very cute little Robin. Anyway, so, the Muppet movie. Someone was posting about the Muppet movie the other day on social media. And I got thinking about the greatest special effect I've ever seen in a film, ever. I've, I, and I've seen lots of films, loads of films. With amazing special effects, with outstanding special effects, practical, computer generated, all kinds of special effects, but nothing, nothing has made me more awestruck than <laughs> seeing Kermit the Frog on his bike. Do you know what I'm talking about? Kermit the Frog is cycling along on a big road, just not a big road, but just a regular road, I suppose, and he's on his bike, he's pedaling along and having a nice old day, and I still don't know how they did it. I was like, how did you do that? How'd you, how'd you do that? He's just sitting there on his bike and the bike is moving along. Kermit's pedaling it. So <laughs> it's amazing. I remember as a kid singing it a bunch of times, of course. And then I think it was about um, nine or something, watching on TV one year, probably around Christmas, then, and shouting out loud, How did I do that? <laughs> I just thought it was the most amazing thing. <laughs> I tell you. But, uh, yeah, oh, of course, another one I'm definitely going to watch over Christmas is the Paddington films. They've become uh, a classic, I think. I think it's, it's it's safe to say those are classics now. You know, they're a staple of uh, this time of year viewing. I've yet to meet anyone that doesn't like the Paddington films. If you don't like the Paddington films, be very, very curious as to know why. Please do write in. Go to michaelmuser.com. And go to the contact page here and let me know. Say so in the you know in the uh, ear front, I'll put that in again. Um, in the uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> the subject line in the subject line. I'm trying to fix my earphone and talk at the same time. But in the subject line, I want you to write. I didn't like Paddington and explain yourself. Why didn't you like Paddington? It's just, a, just two of them. You think like the sequel that won't be as good? The sequel's even better than the first. Yeah, they're making a third one, I heard. Um, I think they started filming that in the middle of the year, didn't they? I think you heard that. Or, well, I suppose they didn't, because it was, there was a strike, so maybe they didn't. Maybe they stopped. But, um, yeah, I wonder will it be any good? Will it be as good? Uh, the first two. Tall Order. I think it's a new director. Uh, taking over. Well, folks, we are in prime... Gift season. Well, you know, when I was a kid, 
the main thing I seemed to always want was an action figure. I loved action figures. And a lot of kids wanted video games for Christmas. That wasn't me. No, never a video game can I a kid. More of an action figure lad, you know. Loved them. Loved them. But here's the thing though, right? So, if... I didn't like these kind of action figures. I know people do. But when an action figure had an action feature, you know. You'd press a button on the back and the arm would swing or the leg would kick or it would twist or something. And I was like, no, 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 I can move your arm. You don't need to, I don't need a button to press to do that. That was my thinking as a six-year-old, you know. And the other thing too was, I was like, you know, because I wanted to have little stories with my action figures, you know, I would use them to tell little stories and to you know, interact with each other, and it wasn't just like, now you're fighting. It'd be like, no, now we're going to have a discussion about something, you know. Oh, we have to save the day from the, you know, the bad guys. Why? Well, because your man, he, oh, he's a real bad ninny. Remember what he did? He punched your man, he kicked your man in the shin. That wasn't nice, was it? <laughs> or something, I don't know. But I wanted a, uh, yeah. And the other thing too was you skipped me as a kid. If they had, like, if they had too wide of an expression, you know? Like, if they were very smiley or very angry, I got, well, they're not always going to be happy, are they? You know? <laughs> You'd be telling you stories like, everyone, I've, I've lost everything. I've, I've, the, the villain has defeated me completely. With a big smile on his face, you know? It doesn't really work. In my little uh, storytelling. <laughs> I was thinking back before about the little stories I would tell with little uh, action figures. Just playing out little plots. And to be so, like, melodramatic, you know? <laughs> just like little soap operas, but with um, superpowers, basically. Oh, there you are. Anyway. But yeah, that was my... T- I never liked the action feature. I don't know. I didn't get the point of the action feature. Though. Honestly, I never got it. Oh, do you know what? Oh. Speaking of action features, my hand is freezing. I think I'm going to go inside and record the rest of this episode indoors. Well, now, me inside, all nice and warm, and... Um, I can't keep the charade going. It's hours later, lads. It's, 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 I, last time I was talking to you, I think it was like quarter to one. Now it's like quarter to seven. <sighs> no, it's, not, it's less. It's more. It's nearly seven o'clock now, actually. Uh, yeah. So it, it's hours later. What was I doing? I had my lunch. Then I was rearranging things. And I found something in a box. Something I thought I had lost years ago. Can you guess what it is? It was, it, it was the 1991 Snoopy Annual. <laughs> of course! Some people out there are saying, of course it was! <laughs> but yeah, I found the 1991 Snoopy Annual. And um, it's looking great. It's now on my shelves with some other annuals, uh, some beanos and a dandy up there. And a shelf with lots of other books as well, too. Yeah. Um, for the Americans, uh, an annual over here is a hard-backed um, book. Basically, a comic book that they put out once a year. I think, actually, they're, they're kind of a thing we'd get here as a kid when you're about, like, at Christmas time. But I think they're brought out in the summer. Or they used to be, anyway. I think nowadays they move them a bit closer to Christmas because like everyone's getting them for Christmas anyway. So there you go. But now, um, so I have a bit of news for you folks. It's kind of a good news, bad news situation here. So a little while ago, I announced a new podcast, Michael Muto's Art Project. And it's looking like I'm not going to be able to do that series yeah, just scheduling and stuff like that. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to find the time to do that podcast. Now, I'm not going to say it's never going to happen. But for right now, I'm just going to put it away for a little while. And it's just not going to happen for right now, anytime in the near future. But good news! 
I have recorded two interviews and I'm going to be posting them here on this podcast feed. So you've got those to look forward to. I have an interview with the incredibly talented artist Skinner and the incredibly talented teacher Ray Lonigan. Ray was a teacher of mine when I attended St. John Central College and I sat down to speak to him about art teaching. So yeah. She's got two really fun interviews to listen to now in the next coming weeks. I think I'm going to have the Ray Lonigan interview first and then the Skinner interview the week after. Well, there we go. That was my bit of news there. Anyway. Well, last week I said I wanted to give you recommendations as well too on the show. And that's what I'm going to give you right now because I'm going to talk about the YouTube channel Dalek 6388. Dalek 6388, right, is a really fascinating YouTube channel. So what the folks on this channel do is they will see a Dalek in an episode of Doctor Who, right? And they'll go, right, what happened to that particular prop? Not the character. What happened to that prop? Okay? So they will go, oh, so this originally appeared in episode such and such in the 70s. And then it went on to be in a church faith and then that Dalek was given away as a raffle and then years later it was hired by this production company to put in the background of an interview with Terry Nation then that Dalek has appeared in this episode and that episode and the top half was here and the bottom half was here and the other half was here and it's just really fascinating just so well researched so well presented it's just a great channel and actually they're just the other day at time of recording they have a new video up where they're interviewing Nicholas Briggs, who since 20, 2005 has been the voice of the Daleks in uh, Doctor Who. So really, really interesting stuff. Really recommend you check that out. If you want a link to it, it's in the latest Michael Muto shoutouts, number 25. So go check that out on michaelmuto.com. I'm just after noticing, I must watch it now, but another YouTube channel that I recommended in the shoutouts, I finished the video game. Who had a seven hour long Castlevania game. Where they went over every single Castlevania game to date. And folks. A lot of people have come back to me to say. Michael. I watched every bit of that video. (laughs) It was absolutely amazing. It's really entertaining. It's so weird how sometimes you'll find people. That do really long form video essays. Maybe not always seven hours long. But fairly long. And just being able to do it in a way that's great pacing, keeps you engaged, makes you want to watch it. Although that seven hour long one, I did have to break up because I was like, I got to do other things as well too. I can't just sit here and watch this. But it is really, really good if you haven't seen it that uh, I finished a video game. Uh, Castlevania video is really, really good. I really recommend that. It's another one I recommend to you actually. But after this, I'm going to watch their new one, which uh, seems to be about Metroid. So I wonder if that's any good. I'll get back to you about that. And I'll be talking about that maybe next week. Well, do you know what, folks? I started off this episode talking about kind of Christmassy things. But I actually haven't uh, put up any decorations at all yet. And not that I'm against putting up Christmas decorations. I just haven't gotten around to it. But some people... I don't, I don't understand this. Some people will put them up in November. I don't understand that, no. Because I'm like, no, I want to kind of a buffer. Because I love Halloween. I love Christmas too. Don't get me wrong. And that's a, you know, kind of person that goes, oh, harumph to the holidays or whatever. No, I love all of the festivities. I mean, I just put up a whole bunch of Christmassy things there on the 1st of December on my website. But I like a buffer. I like a buffer between Halloween. I like Halloween. You know, you know, you all know, listen to this. I'm sure you know I love Halloween. But I love Halloween. And. I love Christmas, but I like a buffer. I like November just to be November, you know. I want to enjoy autumn while it's still with us, you know what I mean? It feels like it's on the way out now, though, definitely. It's definitely on the way out now because it's really cold and frosty, as I was saying today. And my fingers could feel it. I was so numb holding a recorder earlier on. Oh, my goodness. I'm on a different microphone as well, by the way. You might notice that. But anyway, yeah. So, I'm going to start thinking. I think this week I'm going to put up some decorations. But what do you think? When do you put up decorations? Do you put up decorations at all? 
Are you someone that puts them up the 1st of November? You're like, no, Michael, you're completely wrong. I want Christmas straight away, 1st of November, that's the start of Christmas. Or do you put them up the start of December? Or do you wait and put them up much closer to Christmas? Or maybe you don't have any Christmas decorations at all. Maybe you celebrate something else. You know, whatever you celebrate, I'd love to know what you do while you're doing what you're doing this month of December. Are you celebrating anything? Are you doing anything at all? I genuinely love to know. Do write in michaelmusa.com. Go to the contact page and let me know. Well, folks, that's about it for me for this episode. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back again next week with another episode. And I will put all the links to everything I was speaking about in today's episode in the description of this podcast. And uh, all i got left to say is have a great week. And this has been Michael Muso, your podcast pal. Bye, folks.